Welcome everyone. Remembrance Day is next Wednesday and we won't be having a presentation next week, but to honor that special day, which is dedicated to our heroes, we thought that we would highlight a very popular tour that is operated or sorry, that is offered by Trafalgar Tours. So Trafalgar does offer what's called their War Memorial Tour, and that highlights the steps that some of our heroes took during World War I and World War II. To World War II. So today we are going to um, showcase that tour and talk a little bit about it. But before we get started, I do have a few tips for any of our viewers. This is a live presentation, so there might be moments when your screen freezes. Please be patient and it should correct itself within about 30 seconds. If you are viewing today on a handheld device, you may want to unlock your screen view and turn your device sideways, just sort of like that side um, into landscape mode. And that's gonna give you the best view of our photos today. And we do also have a Q&A chat function that's available on the right hand side of your screen. And at the end of the presentation, we will have a Q&A session with our experts. So please post your questions in that chat and we will ask them during this session. So joining us today, we have Laura from Trafalgar Tours to tell us a little bit about touring in general. And again, we're gonna to touch specifically on what we can expect to see on their War Memorial Tours. So thanks for joining us today, Laura. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello, thanks for having me. Very excited to be here. So yes, I've been with Trafalgar now for almost two years. Uh, it's an amazing company to work for. I'm very, very excited. I've been in the travel industry though for almost 15 years now, so I've uh, seen quite a bit of the world and very excited today too to be talking about the War Memorial Tours because I have to say I was able to experience this myself a couple of years ago and it's an amazing, amazing experience and definitely um, one that sticks with you and will be with you for many, many years to come. So thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here again. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about Trafalgar in general, the company? Absolutely. So Trafalgar has actually been around for about 75 years now. So we've been around for a long time. We are a family owned company uh, started by two brothers and uh, Mr. Tolman, uh, Stanley Tolman, who's uh, one of the founders of Trafalgar, actually just celebrated his uh, 90th birthday not long ago. So uh, it's quite amazing um, that he's been <laughs> working and is still, still the CEO and the, the chairman of the company. Um, we're actually part of a larger company called the Travel Corporation. So the Travel Corporation, this is actually our 100th anniversary this year. And for those listening in, you may be familiar with some of our sister brands like Insight Vacations or maybe River Cruising with Uniworld or traveling with, um, as young travelers, perhaps your first travel experience might have been with Contiki for the 18 to 35 year olds. Um, we do travel um, with Trafalgar as well, all over the world. We visit all seven continents, including even Antarctica. So we have a cruise option from South America um, that will take you down to Antarctica. And with nine different travel styles, <clears throat> we have something really for everybody. So we have our regional explorers that focus on a specific region like Tuscany, for example, in Italy, or the Rockies in Canada. Um, we have more leisurely paced experiences as well. So if you're maybe thinking that touring might be too fast paced, we have our city explorers or our country explorers that focus in on particular locations. Of course, cruise and rail experiences as well, and also family trips. And we're finding generational travel is, is becoming so much popular, uh, more popular year over year. So um, family experiences are wonderful to have that opportunity for the kids to have something to, to do um, and not just looking at the history, they really get engaged with it. So it's really something for everybody. Okay, great. And what do you feel sets Trafalgar apart from maybe some of the other major guided tour companies that are out there? So when it comes to Trafalgar, um, we really are all about taking our guests off the beaten track. So of course, we're going to see those iconic sites. You're going to have that VIP access when you're visiting the Vatican, when you're heading to the Eiffel Tower. But it's also, also about giving you more immersive and local experiences as well. Um, with our dive into culture experiences, visiting with Beatrice, who was just showing, you just saw her on the screen, um, getting to go visit the um, French countryside, you know, getting to go visit her farm in the French countryside and learn what it's like to live in that um, French provincial life. I feel like I always think of Belle from Beauty and the Beast, you know, when you think about that French provincial um, country 
countryside, but you know, having real authentic experiences, you know, wine production when you're in the Niagara region, for example, or of course in Italy, um, learning more about those those things. And, and again, getting to meet with people that you wouldn't typically get to meet with if you were just going on your own or you were traveling with another company. Um, these kinds of local experiences really do make um, truly memorable memories for our guests and our Be My Guest experiences that we have on all of our trips, again, take you off that, out of the city, off onto that more authentic experience. We also always include something to give back to the local communities. So we have our Join Trafalgar program, our Tread Right Foundation. And again, these are really key things for us with Trafalgar. It's all about giving back to the local communities. As we know, everything that's going on right now, it's so important to you know really support local, right? <laughs> it's all about supporting yeah. local. And we do that on all of our trips. So it's uh, again, you know, whether it be working with local farmers and giving them the opportunity to um, continue to sustain, whether it be a local art and like Marta, for example, in Italy, learning, you know, getting to learn about weaving and stuff that she does in that area and allowing her to be able to do that, make it her living and also share that with our guests. It's really an amazing experience and something that we really um, care strongly about. Of course, with the Trad Ride, it's also about caring for the environment. So when it comes to our coaches, we no longer have plastic water bottles on the coach. We do ask for reusable, um, just little things along the way that we do to really enhance our guests experience, take them off the beaten track and again, giving back to the local communities and the planet so that it is there for future generations. That's great initiatives in there as well. Um, now you were speaking, you touched a little bit on COVID. Have you been able to, or has Trafalgar been able to um, operate any tours since COVID kind of halted everything worldwide in March? So we made the decision early on to suspend our trips actually, just because we were really, it's always paramount for us, our safety and the security of our guests, as well as of course the staff on, um, on, on the road. So our travel directors, our drivers. Um, so during this time, we've been working really closely with the World Health Organization, with the World Travel and Tourism Council to put into place protocols um, for distancing, hygiene, um, to really ensure that when the world does start to open up again, that we are ready to welcome you. Um, something we have introduced, which is unique to us with Trafalgar and also our sister brand Insight is our well-being director. So our well-being director, is going to be working with our travel directors, with our drivers for groups of, when we have groups of 21 or more. So on all of our coaches, they're fully sanitized every night, as well as all the touch points are going to be taken care of and cleaned throughout the day. But those wellness directors are going to be making sure that all these protocols are in place for the hotels, the restaurants, all of the attractions that we'll be visiting along the way to ensure that everything is in place and ready for when our guests arrive. Um, of course, they always have the access to masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, all of those things as well. Um, and uh, also too, before you leave to go on your trip, there will be questionnaires for you to fill out and everything just to ensure that you are okay. But we've also introduced social distancing on the coaches, making sure the group sizes are smaller, of course, when you're off the coach. So we're gonna be working on all those kinds of things to again, make sure that your safety is top of mind, first priority, um, and we're ready to go when everything starts to open up. That's great. Sounds like you guys put a lot of work and thought into that. So that's excellent. Um, so we're going to jump right into those war memorials and battlefields. Um, can you tell us about a little bit about your tours? I know you have a few tours that touch on those areas. Can you tell us about those options? Absolutely. So we do have a few different trips. Um, that do take in the um, war memorial sites. Some of them are not specifically geared to the history, the war history, but they do take in some of the history of the, um, the wars. And then we do have one that is specifically focused that I'll be going into a little bit more depth when we go on. So our European highlights, our European spotlight itineraries, these are discovery experiences. So you're gonna be going to multi countries, but we do visit some of these sites for World War One, for example, to the Somme Battle Field. So going up into Passchendaele, into the north of France, um, of course, very, very um, a lot of history there. We have also in the United States, we do ones going into the uh, taking part in the Civil War, getting to go and experience Gettysburg. So with our historic highlights experience, going into Poland and really looking at more of the history and some of the, um, you know, terrible things that came out of World War II when you come comes to Poland and the 
um, the war sites there, um, visiting Auschwitz, visiting, um, <clears throat> you know, some of the, the sites there, uh, the, the ghettos and everything in Warsaw and Krakow. Uh, it really is a, a very touching, touching experience. Um, and of course, no matter where you go in Europe, you're going to be affected by the history, of course, of the wars. One of the things I love about our travel directors who do go into these areas, though, as well, and especially when I get into my next, the main trip, which is our um, World War One and World War II battlefields itinerary, is that many people who go on these trips, they're going because they've had family members who either, um, you know, fought in the war, perhaps, you know, didn't make it home. They want to go and see where their their family members fought, where they where they may still be now to this day. Um, visit the cemeteries, look for their names, pay tribute. So our travel directors, our specialists that we use on the ground, are well versed in this, and they're there to help. And when you're traveling with us, not just on the war sites, but on any of our trips, one of the wonderful things that we do is our travel directors will actually reach out to our guests before they leave. So if you are traveling on uh, a war memorial site and you want information on, maybe you have somebody who fought at Juneau Beach or from Newfoundland, um, you want to go to Beaumont Hamill and, and find their names, they're there to help you to find that. So they'll work with you to, to, to look for that information. So our war memorial site uh, trip, our battle, World War I and World War II battlefields itinerary. So again, this is our comprehensive tour that the primary focus is, of course, the historic sites of World War One and World War Two. Um, so, some of the places that we will be visiting here is the um, Imperial War Museum in London. And I have to tell you, the first time I visited this war museum, it was just it gave me chills because there is a spot in there where you're actually you feel like you are in London during the war when it was being bombed, and you can hear the bombs, and you can you just it just makes you feel like you're actually living that experience. It's just unbelievable. Of course, the DDA landing beaches, so visiting um, of Normandy, so you're going to be you know, seeing uh, Juno Beach and, of course, Omaha Beach, um, Amiens Cathedral. So again, you know, when you think about, you know, World War World War One and just some of the things that happened there, um, heading into Belgium. So again, visiting the Somme site in northern France, heading to Passchendaele, of course, Flanders Fields. You get to actually go and see, of course, where Bob McRae, John McRae, sorry, I don't want to say Bob McRae. <laughs> I think it's Bob Ray and John McRae, um, you know, of course, wrote the, the the poem Flanders. And I have to say, when you're in when you're in um, Ypres, Belgium, it's crazy because it looks like it's a very old, old city. And this is where the Flanders Museum is. And it, it isn't. It's not that old. The buildings are not that old. It was actually completely bombed, completely destroyed during the war. World War One, and when they had to rebuild, they had the opportunity to choose whether they wanted to rebuild as it was or rebuild in a modern fashion, and they chose to rebuild it to look exactly like it did pre-war. So it's really quite amazing to be walking the streets and know that those buildings are really only about 100 years old or standing at Menin Gate there and, you know, <clears throat> It just touches my soul to this day to think that you know, hundred, you know, over a hundred years has gone by since World War One, and the Menin Gate. Every night they stop traffic at 8 p.m. and they have a ceremony to celebrate the fallen and to, again, pay tribute. So Canadians, Australians, Americans, anybody who fought during that time will actually go pay tribute. So it's really quite amazing. Um, to really get to experience it. So um, it's really one of those trips that. You know, it's 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 for history lovers, but it's also for anybody who is, you know, when you think about the sacrifices that were made to be able to go and experience it, to stand in the trenches. You know, I, I had the opportunity when I was there, it was actually um, the anniversary, the, the Vimy anniversary. Yeah. Um, and it was pouring rain the morning that we were going through the trenches. And when you see the trenches where the, the Allied soldiers were fighting and where the, the German soldiers were, like literally when they say they can see the whites of their eyes, like you're that close, it's just amazing. But it was so cold, you know, it was April and it's cold and you're walking through these trenches and it was pouring rain. And, you know, you're thinking, oh my gosh, like I just wanna go inside and get cozy. And you think that these soldiers were standing there in this weather, in this, you know, in these trenches for, days and months you know it's just the sacrifice that they made you know it was just it really it's really quite an amazing experience so um if you have the opportunity or if you've ever been thinking of it it's it's just an incredible incredible itinerary for sure great thank you sounds like a great way to pay honor to our um fallen soldiers 
So now just moving on, do you offer with Trafalgar any other type of specialty travel or specialty we, itineraries? Yeah, so one of the, the big ones that uh, a lot of people think of when they think of um, you know specialty trips and, and like to experience is uh, the Christmas markets, you know, in Germany and in France. They're just uh, such a fun way to, to really get you in the holiday spirit. So the Christmas markets usually open mid-November and go till um, early December and uh, beautiful wooden huts, lots of great craft work. You know, you've got the mulled wine, you've got the uh, the chestnuts roasting. And it's just, it's a fun, lively experience. And I have to say, you know, I have been over during the Christmas markets and I get told, asked, it's like, oh, is it really cold there? It's, it's, it's cool, but it's not, it's not terrible. You dress for the weather, but it's just such a festive, fun experience to, to go and experience. And then of course, Oberammergau. <clears throat> so Oberammergau was supposed to happen this year. It is every 10 years that they put on this amazing um, passion play. And it's quite a fascinating thing. So Oberammergau is a small village in Germany. And since the Middle Ages, they've actually been putting on the passion play. So it actually started back during the, the plague. <laughs> so um, and they, they, they made a promise to God that if they were saved, if their, their village was saved, they would um, make sure that they, they remembered that and they would pay tribute by putting on the passion play. Um, so now it's every 10 years. So it's really quite an amazing experience that the entire village comes together. They all participate. Um, as I say, it was supposed to be this year, but they have delayed it until 2022. So if it was something that you were thinking of and maybe you weren't able to get um, availability for, because it does sell out usually many, many years in advance, um, you may actually have that opportunity now to be able to get some space on it for 2022. We do have ones that are just um, focused on Germany, but we also have many different itineraries that include the um, Oberammergau experience. Closer to home as well, one of our popular trips and a bucket list uh, for us here on the east coast or the eastern part of Canada is the uh, Calgary Stampede, you know. So we do have um, some great itinerary options like our spectacular uh, Canadian Rockies that you can do the uh, Stampede option on as well. Um, so yeah, so lots of different itineraries to choose from. The best thing to do is if you are thinking of a particular um, experience, maybe you want to go check out the Albuquerque uh, Balloon fia uh, Fiesta in New Mexico or the Rose Bowl Parade, um, do speak to your travel consultant at Sella Vacations because they'll be able to, to help you out with all those great itineraries as well. Okay, and I was told that you have a great flexible booking option and um, so if someone was concerned about traveling, if they maybe got booked far, far in advance and then was uncomfortable traveling because of COVID or if the tour is cancelled, there is a, a great flexible policy that you have. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, so right now we actually have um, our flexible deposits. So we actually right now are only requiring a $99 deposit. We have opened up for sale, not just 2021, but we're also um, have 2022 open for sale. So if you are maybe thinking, not ready for next year, but you're thinking of the following year, which many people are thinking now, it's like, you know, I'm gonna do something really amazing for 2022 so now's the time to be looking at booking that there's some great offers out there but you can lock in your space with a 99 dollars deposit you have up till 30 days after the time of putting your deposit down to change your mind and then you that deposit is fully refundable after that time it goes into what we've always had which is our deposit protection plan so with our deposit protection plan you know, if you, you cancel or you change your mind, that deposit isn't lost, we'll hold it in a trust account for you. So then you can go ahead and rebook when you're ready and that money will be waiting for you to be applied to your booking. Um, we have fully flexible change options as well. So again, we know things are <laughs> a little bit, um, never know. We, we hope everything will be all ready to go by a certain date, but we never know. So we wanna make sure that you feel comfortable as well to, to know that your travel plans can be completely changed. Um, very, very flexible change options, no change fees or anything for that. So we're able to, to re rebook you for, for a different date if uh, something happens. Okay. And one of the more popular things that we've seen also is people wanting to travel with just their bubble. So do you have anything like a private group travel that would allow someone to travel with just their family bubble or their friends and family bubble? 
We do. We do have an amazing groups department. Um, you can, uh, we always have great group promotions for as uh, little as nine guests. Um, but we do have right now, because we are seeing that trend as well, that, you know, people are wanting to travel just with their close friends or their close family, that little social bubble. So we do have put that right now. Um, basically, any itinerary that we have, so there's quite a few to choose from, but there's 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 quite a few options for Europe as well as for North America, including Canada. Um, if you talk to your Sela vacations consultant, they'll be able to give you the list if you have a particular destination in mind. Um, but with our itineraries that are part of this, you can actually do a exclusive coach just for your travel bubble. So with a minimum of 12 guests, you can have your own personal coach with your own driver and your own travel director. So it's pretty cool. Um, how we're doing the pricing for these groups is you'll take the brochure price and you'll just add on a surcharge. So again, depending on the number of people, for 12 people it would be a 30% surcharge. If you had 20 guests, um, it would be a 10% surcharge. So it's a really nice way for you to be able to keep your little travel bubble, your own little family bubble, and um, get to experience the world and have all those those amazing experiences. And I have to say, you know, just even in general, you know, when I, when I think traveling, uh, traveling with Trafalgar, traveling on a guided tour, it just puts everything at ease, you know, because we ha we're the ones who are taking care of all the things. We have people who are in destination. You don't have to worry about planning the, um, you know, coordinating to get into the Vatican, for example, or to get into these places. We take care of all those details for you. So to be able to have that little social bubble and all of those great things experienced, it's just really, you know, puts your mind at ease and makes your, your travel experience so much nicer. Yeah, no, that's great. And just to flip that on the other side, what if I'm traveling solo? Is there any special pricing or options for someone who's traveling solo? So we do come out um, with uh, solo deals um, throughout the year. So again, if you are traveling as a solo, you have a particular destination in mind, I would say just speak to your travel consultant. They'll be able to tell you um, what the current offers are. Um, in some cases, we have a wave the, the single supplement or we have a reduction of single supplement. Uh, we used to have what we called our guaranteed share program. Of course, <laughs> that has we, we, we postponed that for the time being. So if you are traveling as a solo, you will have your own solo room. Uh, many hotels in Europe actually have rooms just for solo travelers. So it's really, you know, you don't have the same surcharges, for example, as if you're used to traveling on a cruise. I know, uh, I'm sure you were talking the other day that, you know, many times on cruises, if you're traveling as a single traveler, they're going to charge you as if you're two people in that room. We don't do that. So really, you're only just paying whatever the difference in cost would be for a hotel, typically for a single supplement. So the single supplements will range usually from 10 to 25 percent, depending on the destination. But absolutely, we do have deals throughout the year for our solo travelers. <clears throat> okay. And what about any other current offers or promotions that you have on right now? Yeah. So we also do have our, our standing offers for young travelers. So again, you know, there, we're seeing that intergenerational, you know, grandparents want to take the grandkids, that kind of thing. So we have uh, young traveler discounts as well for kids under the age of 17. Um, and actually our youngest age that we'll take on our coaches is five. So it really gives you quite a <laughs> good broad range. Um, we also have our past traveler discounts as well. So we have what we call our very important traveler discount where you could save an additional five percent for being a past traveler. This is also combinable amongst any of our sister brands. So maybe you've done a Uniworld River Cruise and now you're wanting to do a um, tour with Trafalgar. You can uh, you still get that five percent savings. Um, we also have our early payment discounts happening right now. Our uh, worldwide trips where you could save up to another additional ten percent um, depending on when you're looking to travel and when you're looking to book for 2021. So again, lots of great options out there. We do come up with last minute savings throughout the year as well. So if maybe you're wanting to wait a little while to go and see what's happening. Again, speak to your sell-off vacations consultant and they'll be able to uh, keep you up to date on everything that's current at the time that you're ready to book. All right. So my last question for you today, Laura, what would be your one insider tip that you would suggest from your personal travel experiences doing a Trafalgar tour? 
Well, I have to say one of the things I love about traveling with Trafalgar are the local specialists that we use. So we have, again, amazing travel directors, but we also use incredible local specialists, um, whether it be art historians or, you know, lifelong residents, beautiful Jarda and her family who welcome us into their home. Um, but one of the things that's great about these local specialists that's different than just somebody who reads it in a guidebook is that they really bring you into the heart of the destination. So Dee Morgan, um, we got to, to spend some time with her when we were in Belfast last year, and she's just amazing. Like when you're hearing her stories about growing up through the troubles, of course, during the 70s and the early 80s, and you think about all the things that happened in Northern Ireland, I mean, it's just incredible. And, and but she she can bring you into the the city. So like she takes you into places that you'd never find on your own. Um, the little hidden gems. So there was this amazing fish and chip shop that she was able to point out to me. Um, I'm actually celiac, so I can't have gluten. So I was like, oh, I really want to have fish and chips when I'm there. So she found this incredible little shop never would have found it on my own and and you know again it's those little insider tips it's those places you know when we were in venice uh, on a different trip you know they they took me to an area of venice that for anybody who's ever been to venice before usually it's crazy busy when you're in saint mark's square right? like you know there's so many people it's just there's there's so much of a, a rush and a hustle and a bustle but you know you just go a few blocks off from that area and you find these beautiful little private squares and it's like you're in a completely different world and i have to say that to me is one of the the real insider tips is to really you know spend that time with those local specialists listen to them you know utilize them because they're going to take you and and take you to places and give you those experiences that you're just never going to be able to get any other way it's pretty pretty amazing that's great. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, unfortunately, we were we were to have an agent uh, present their memories with us today, but we weren't able to uh, make that happen tonight. So we're going to jump right into the Q&A session that we normally do. Shannon, how are you today? I'm really great, Sherry. Thank you so much for asking. Right. Laura, that was fantastic. Um, certainly uh, learned a lot from that from uh, your presentation. I would love to get over there and see some of the memorials myself uh, at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a few questions come in this evening, so we'll get started with those. Um, mm -hmm. So the first one here, Laura, is um, someone mentioned that they have a family member who has lost their lives in the war and are buried overseas and they would love to make the time to visit. Is there free time during these tours for uh, me to go and experience and how would I go about planning that? Yeah, so absolutely. That's another wonderful thing about traveling with us is the way that we design our itineraries. You aren't going to be wasting time having to wait in lines and things like that. We coordinate it in a way that you do have a lot of free time and flexibility. Um, as I mentioned earlier, having that opportunity to reach out to your travel director before you're leaving to go on your, your holiday. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're looking for somebody in particular or you want, um, you're trying to find information for um, where they're located or more information on, on, on arranging transportation, for example, when you get over there, um, we'll be able to do that. So just just reach out to your, let your, your travel um, consultant know when you're booking, they'll be able to reach out to us. So we'll put a note on it for our guest relations or operations side, but also you have that opportunity to follow up even um, closer to the date to really to coordinate that. So the travel director will be able to help you um, okay. arrange taxis or transportation, or maybe it might be a, a, a situation where you might be close enough that they can even, you know, might, you might be stopping along the way or something, it's possible. Right. Okay, sounds like some good flexibility and assistance mm -hmm. there. So definitely one of our Salifications agents can help arrange that as well in advance. So that's that's great. Um, thank you, Laura. Uh, the next one here for you, Laura, is um, someone said, I am interested in the battlefield tour, the World War One and World War Two. How far in advance should I book to guarantee a spot? And I'm sure that's kind of a, a harder, harder question because I'm sure every year to year is different, but year is different. Um, yeah. just in general, yeah. I guess. Yep. So, so um, we have a few different um, dates for that particular itinerary, um, but I have to say, I know for 2021, things are starting to fill up quite quickly. So if you right. are thinking to go for next summer, I would probably book sooner than later. Um, knowing you just have to put down a $99 deposit to secure your spot as well, will ensure that you do have your um, availability on the trip. Right. Um, yep. We are, um, 
our trip, because we're also social distancing on many of on the coaches and things, the group size will be uh, slightly smaller than what we normally would have. So I would say uh, normally we have a maximum of 48. It's going to be much less than less than that. So again, less spaces on the seat. More people too whose travel plans were affected for this year are now rebooking right. as well for next year. So again, um, if you are interested in going, I would say book it sooner than later, just to ensure you do have that availability and to have have the best pricing as well. To take okay. advantage of those early fantastic. And a $99 deposit is uh, quite appealing. So mm -hmm. that's great. Can I um, jump in with the question, Shannon? Of course. Sorry. Yeah, sure, sure. For that tour, it, I'm sure it doesn't go year round. Um, is there a specific time? It does go year round? It doesn't go year round. No, oh, no. no. So um, it's just seasonal. So the, they go from um, uh, about May to September. Is there a better time to go? during um, that time period not not really i mean i usually find like if the spring this the the spring and the the shoulder seasons tend to be most popular for us in canada traveling to europe just because um there's less crowds like sometimes in the summer months i know we have to travel and summer is busy as well but for for flight pricing and for for less um tourists like Europeans traveling the the shoulder seasons are quite popular um spring might be a little bit more rain whereas fall might be a little a little bit nicer weather wise that way but I believe there's not a bad time to go um but those shoulder seasons are, are quite popular okay yeah. thank you thanks Sharon I did just take a very quick look on Trafalgar site and there are a couple of those uh, World War One and Two battlefield tours sold out already mm -hmm. Uh, one yeah. in April and also one in uh, May as well. So um, that just kind of proves that people are certainly booking and uh, taking advantage of that promo. So um, the next one here, Laura, was um, someone said that they don't love the thoughts of being on a bus for too long. Is there a lot of driving in between stops usually or is it, a, is it spaced out well? So yeah, so we do stop um, quite frequently. So depending on the trip that you choose as well. So we have many different travel styles as mentioned. So if you're looking for something more leisurely as well, look for more two and three night stays in a destination. Because of course, you know, if you're spending three nights in Rome, um, you're not going to be getting up early and traveling around by coach a lot, right? Like you're going to have more, more yeah. free time in that city. Um, if you're doing a um, discovery trip where you're going to be going from Paris to Rome, <laughs> then it's going to be a little bit of a long Longer time on the coach, but no more than an hour and a half, two hours um, per that were ever spent on a coach at one time. So we, okay. we always break up the day. So either um, stopping someplace along the way to do sightseeing or stopping someplace for for coffee, uh, bathroom breaks and lunch breaks. I have to say, even like when I when we took um, uh, went from Rome to uh, Venice uh, on my Italian holiday uh, last year. We actually stopped in this really cute little medieval town, this Italian town for lunch that if we were taking the train or we were going any other way, we would never would have been able to find that place. So again, right. um, the, 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 the bus is not that that bad, but we do break it up. We do yeah. have a bathroom as well on board and they're quite, quite cozy, comfortable coaches. We have the charging stations, there's Wi-Fi on board. So um, Hopefully you're not like me and, and I, I just like to sleep when I'm on a bus. It's so funny. I can't sleep on an airplane, but I always fall asleep on the bus. <laughs> They're very, very cozy. But, um, yeah. you know, there's lots of great commentary. Sometimes we'll play a movie as well. We do have, um, you know, movies that we'll play. Like, so if you're going through Austria, you know, might, might play The Sound of Music or, you know, right. something like that. So it's connected okay. to the trip. So, but again, we, we definitely have um, stops along the way. It's not going to be long periods of time sitting on a coach. Very cool. And I'm sure um, I'm sure the travelers get to know the other travelers as well. So I'm sure that there's lots of um, chatter yes. on the bus as well. That's so that, I'm right. sure that that's fun. Yeah. Awesome. OK. And the last question I have here for the evening, Laura, is um, someone asked um, they've traveled with Trafalgar before. And um, do you have a repeat guest discount? So we do have a repeat guest. Yes, it's called our very important traveler discount. So right now on all of our trips, we do have an additional 5% savings um, on any of our worldwide holidays. And that's all over and above any other promotions that we have going on. It's always combinable with those other um, current promotions. So it's a really okay. nice little way to save a little bit extra and to thank you for being a past traveler. Yeah, excellent. And do you have to use that within a certain period of time from when like your last trip was is there a um, cutoff there or 
Uh, not really a cutoff. As long as you can let us, as long as you remember the name of your trip and, and you know, have an idea, we should be able to find it for you. So we can go back, I think about up to 10 years. So okay. if it's been, you know, if it's been four years since your last trip, we, we can find you. So, okay. And there's some other brands as well that they can, if they uh, mm -hmm. used. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. Laura, that's great. Um, that was all for the evening for questions. I'll put it back to you, Sherry, but thank you so much, Laura, for, uh, for all the information there. That, that was really great. Okay. Thanks so much, Shannon. Thank you, Laura, for joining us. I am definitely a huge history buff, so this was a real treat for me. Um, I love any, anything to do with Europe. <laughs> Um, and thank you to all the viewers for joining us today. So yes. if you did post a question and it didn't get answered, Shannon. Yeah, thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, mm -hmm. It's been a great experience. Thanks, Laura. So if you did post a question and it didn't get answered, Shannon's going to be on the chat function for about 10 minutes after the presentation to answer those questions. And you are definitely more than welcome to call Sell Off Vacations tonight if you're interested in this tour or any other tour that Trafalgar offers. Um, our lines are open till 9 p.m. Eastern tonight, and you can reach one of our agents at 1-877-735-5633. So today's presentation will be posted on our YouTube channel, which is My Sell Off Vacations. And on our channel, you can view any of our past presentations, as well as any of our latest resort and airline COVID safety videos. So next Wednesday, we will be taking a we will be taking the day off um, from the presentations as it's uh, Remembrance Day. So please watch your emails for our notification to let you know what our next presentation topic will be, and that will be on November 18th. See you then. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you.